Hi, I'm Tom Patterson, and we are so fortunate to have a few minutes with George Bai, founder, CEO, and chairman of Bai Aerospace. Thank you for joining us. You're such a respected innovator and an early mover in the electric space, Mr. Bai. Remind us, how did you get here and share a, a little bit of your story with us, especially uh, the moments that you see as important milestones toward electric innovation? Tom, it's a pleasure. And we're delighted to be with you today. I, I tell you, aviation has been in my blood since I was just a youngster. My mother introduced me to flying. Uh, she was a, a pilot. We learned to fly on a Piper Cherokee 140. What a great little airplane. And then uh, in my teenage years, I continued to fly. I, I became an Air Force pilot eventually, but I tell you the, the key moment in my life was going solo in a Cessna 172 uh, in my early 20s. I remember that vividly, becoming you know that that only person in the in the cabin flying that airplane changed my life. And of course, we're here today in large part because we want to invigorate and inspire young people, just like myself, so many years ago, to join the general aviation industry, become a part of this adventure. Uh, I started young, and I hope I hope we can we can do that for so many others as well. So tell me, why did you choose to go down the path of electric aviation, and and what's your take on the potential of electric as an industry game changer? Well, the electric game changing uh, event has really been an evolution over so many years. Uh, it, it hasn't just suddenly appeared. We really can go back to EV. In, in automobile to, to electric, of course, with the Toyota Prius and the Tesla and so many others. That kind of transition has, has really been taking place over probably a couple of decades altogether. And, you know, in my, in my life, going through the evolution and revolution as an Air Force pilot and then in advanced systems and development of new aircraft in a traditional sense, with the T6J Pats and, and later working with, with, with Boeing and helping on the, the new advanced jet trainer program, we could see conventional evolution take place. 10, 20 years ago, we began to see electric evolution take place. And by aerospace was inspired by that transition and, and looking forward to embracing that technology and all of its benefits for general aviation as our responsibility to kind of pioneer the future uh, with general aviation. So um, remind us again what aircraft you've pre previously brought to market and how that's informing where you're going with by aerospace. Well, we have been uh, a part of the aviation aerospace industry uh, for some years. Uh, after I got out of the Air Force uh, Desert Storm uh, timeframe, uh, I, I joined the Flight Safety Raytheon Beach program, uh, the, the T6J PATS, Primary Air Crew Training System, and was able to, to help uh, bring the ground-based training system with that new, new airplane. It was part of the kind of the development team. Uh, very, very exciting, but very, very challenging. And oh my gosh, did I get my young engineering and pilot eyes open to all of the challenges of bringing in a new airplane to market. Uh, some years later, that experience and some of my early entrepreneurial uh, experience was brought to bear as I was hired by Boeing to work with this new TX concept, it was called at the time, later becoming the T7 advanced jet trainer. And once again, oh my gosh, the process of developing and bringing a new airplane to market is immense uh, and very, very rewarding. Those experiences and, and others really formed the backdrop to launching by aerospace, the, the development of an all new, from tip to tail, design around the benefits of electric aviation, electric propulsion system, the battery modules, the emerging technologies enable this transition to a, a completely new ground up, normal category, type certified electric uh, airplane. 
A lot of folks are watching the eFlyer 2 as it progresses toward certification. What's the latest um, on the airplane certification and the production? Can you share that with us? And, and also, when do you expect it to enter service? So the development of the eFlyer 2 began with the prototype, which we've been flying for some four years. Uh, various battery modules, motors, the evaluation of performance, cooling, charging, maintenance, all of that has been validated and come underneath the certification program for the eFlyer 2, which began in April of 2018. The normal category 14 CFR Part 23, Amendment 64 was passed and enabled for the first time a normal category aircraft like a Cessna or a Piper or a Cirrus to be brought to market with an electric propulsion system. So the prototype came first, amazing and remarkable process, very challenging as I just mentioned, but it gave us the, the background and the proof that electric is real and can be brought to market. The way we bring an airplane to market, again, under normal category, which allows for full business use, pilot training use, uh, cargo, passenger transportation, all of that, of course, is accomplished through the FAA under Part 23. And that process began uh, some three years ago. The, the validation of the design, the agreement with the FAA and how we work each of the subsystems of the aircraft through the process has uh, been nearly completed. In the next year, uh, year and a half, we'll be bringing that to a conclusion with the actual test of those components individually and then in the collective. That in turn becomes the TC or the type certificate and of course the the process by which we can now deliver airplanes to our customers. So you're thinking maybe the end of next year for certification, or, right? Or early in the year following, 2023, the, the impacts of the pandemic uh, have been ongoing, of course, as we've seen across the, uh, across the industry. Man, there's great hope for, for emergence, and we're seeing uh, all kinds of indications for that. But the legacy of, that, of, the, of the weight of the pandemic uh, is on us and our suppliers and, of course, the FAA them, themselves. Time is running short, so I only have time for um, one or two more questions. And I definitely wanted to touch on what you thought the tech breakthroughs are going to be needed um, as far as, you know, what how, how we're going to get to the next level of electric flight. What do you think the most important tech breakthrough is going to be? You know, we we immediately point to battery cell technology. Of course, uh, many of us miss that electric motors haven't been the primary propulsion system on an airplane until now. So uh, quite frankly, the electric motor revolution as a primary propulsion system is equally important as the obvious energy storage system, the electric cells, the batteries, and the module, the module monitored by a battery management system and in the collective brought forward to the controller and to the, and to the motor. But what's, what's remarkable, we, we, uh, we smile because everybody goes, well, what about battery technology? And of course, today, the battery technology, the energy density, the, the amount of energy stored per unit weight is sufficient for a primary trainer, the eFlyer 2, to be brought to market with a three hour flight endurance and a, and a focus on producing the next generation of pilots. With economics, one fifth the operating cost of a legacy conventional trainer. Oh my gosh, that, that changes the world in a beneficial way. But the enabling technology, batteries and motors, collectively enabling that airplane to be brought to market. And of course, the trend for, for energy density and for motors just continues to improve. And as we progress, that technology progresses and we go on to the eFlyer 4 and then later the eFlyer 800. Well, thank you very much, George Baia, by Aerospace as you move forward with the uh, eFlyer 2. Thanks for taking time to be with us today and uh, thank you for watching. Thank, thank you, Tom.